All right, so today we're going to do a continuation. I'm going to actually turn down the lights, maybe make it a little easier for you to see. And what we're going to do is just kind of recap real quick as I grab a pencil here. So anyway, what I want to recap here is essentially these walls here, like I said yesterday, I really don't care if you do a single line at this point, as long as they are straight and they are the same distance, okay? That's huge. They can't, I don't want to see a wall that goes like this because you were too lazy to measure from here to there to determine uh, a wall, wall uh, room uh, dimension and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is, yesterday you should have had somewhat of a layout, kind of got an idea, hey, this is kind of what I want, this is kind of what I'm looking at, et cetera, et cetera. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and draw these in. If you haven't done this yet, go ahead and plan to do it. We'll do it together. And then on this side, I'm going to actually draw it in. I'm going to go over these uh, templates here in a little bit once I get my rooms actually put in. And then you guys can go from there. So just follow along with me as you're doing yours. I don't mind if you guys are going ahead and continuing to work as long as you're doing it quietly and respectfully to uh, the people that who are trying to pay attention to me. So, let's see here. Grab my glasses. Grab my, uh, my architect scale here. All right. So, as always, we're using the quarter inch scale right here and I said I was going to do a laundry area over here so what I have to do here is kind of look and see exactly how I want to do this I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this wall here and I really probably could have should have done that over here I may actually do that move that wall here to go all the way across over here and do the same over here turn this into a laundry room and then a bedroom. I'm gonna probably actually take that wall right there um, and change it a little bit. The reason being is because if somebody needs to use a restroom from this room, they would have to walk through their bedroom into that bathroom. Or I can just go ahead and add another bathroom here that actually opens up into the living area. Maybe that'll be the better one way to do it versus having to redo that wall. I do think I want to move this wall though. I wanna move it out. The reason I don't want to put a door here is because this is part of my kitchen. So if this is part of my kitchen, then it really would make sense to have a door coming out of your bathroom into your kitchen. It doesn't make sense to me anyway. So I'll go ahead and take a moment, erase this line here, redraw these lines, and then actually it'll give more room in the bedroom. Um, so when we go to put our furniture in later, then we can go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put everything together real quick. You guys continue to work. All right, go ahead and erase this line right here. Now, one thing that's a bad habit don't do, don't take your hand and wipe that off your paper. All you'll do is smear the lead. You can do a couple different things. One, you can take uh, and literally just shake it onto the floor. Or you can, uh, which no, we don't have the horseshoe, uh, horsehair brush, not enough for everybody anyway. So what I'm gonna do here is determine the length of this wall here, which is eight feet. I'm going to measure up here, right there. We'll make a mark at eight feet. And that is going to be my wall right here. And like I said, I'm going to make a light line that can be seen, but not so light that I can't see it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and build this other wall right here real quick. So 
just like so. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do that exact same thing over here. Using a quarter inch scale. On the other side of the house. I'll go to eight feet. Make a small mark there. And essentially take this. that wall looked a little crooked earlier, so that would make sense now. Okay. Like I said, your house doesn't necessarily need to look like this. I want you to think. I want you to imagine. I want you to draw. I don't care if this is the front of your house, this is your, or this is the front, or this is the front. Don't care if this is the master suite area kicked off to the back. I, I don't really care. I don't care if your kitchen is over here, your living is over here. I, whatever you can imagine, whatever, however you imagine this would work best for you. So, or if this is the design that you were gonna go with anyway, no, I don't have any fault there either because it's a fairly simple design, fairly simple layout. Now, if you choose that you want your home to have that architectural look, you are more than welcome to double line your walls. Essentially what we're doing here is, is a standard wall will count it as four inches thick. It's actually four and a half. So from one end to the other, outside to outside of this space here, outside here, outside here would be four and a half inches in between because your two by four stud is three and a half inches thick. Add a half inch on this side, add a half inch on that side for drywall. That comes out to four and a half inches. And the way you would identify that, if you really want to get after it, is you put that on zero, and then you start counting back this way. And I'll zoom in real quick for you there. My wall is maybe just a little thin. So, based on that right there, it would say that um, I'm actually working with a two inch wall right there. So my walls are a little thin, but it gives that simulation of that it is a full wall, okay? All right. Moving on. So, keeping with my three foot rule that I had earlier, I'm going to line, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull six inches, actually I wanna pull three inches. So I'm gonna pull three inches here from that inside wall to right there. That's going to be marked at zero right there. I can erase that little line there. So being I've drawn my lines lightly, they're so easy to erase. So now, being I've made my mark there, made my mark here and here, this is 36 inches or three foot. Now I can erase where that door would be. Now there's a reason we're doing this. This isn't necessarily an open. You know that bathrooms, we have doors, whether they're barn doors or whether they're swinging doors or whatever you have in your house or whatever your preference is. Then we put the swing of the door and so forth. And I'll illustrate that here shortly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this door in over here while I'm already working on it. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna come six inches over, zero, three foot, just like that. Then I'll take the old eraser here and erase that door opening. You really can't see it with my hand in the way. And I'm taking the point of this to come right up to the edge of my line and then I just work it back and forth. Just like that. And then tap that off on the floor. Easy peasy. Remember, don't wipe with your hand. You wipe with your hand, you smear the lead. Gives you an ugly, ugly picture. All right, so that, that space is done for now. We'll put in our toilet and tubs and all that stuff. Remember, this is a minimum, minimum now, 
minimum of five foot inside to inside right there, okay? That has to be five feet. I'm going to put it, your dimension mark numbers are always near the center of your dimension. I'm going to take my ruler right here. Draw to that line there. And put just a little bitty baby arrow right there. You don't even have to put it on both sides. You can just put it on one side. It just shows that that's where that mark ends. I'm going to zoom in on that so you guys can see that. Less is more in this scenario, okay? The less you put on there, the better as far as numbers and information. So make everything that you mark on there, make it count, make it important, make it have value, okay? All right. Because if you make it too cluttered, it becomes super confusing. All right, in this situation here, I need to determine how big of a laundry room I need, how large does my bathroom need to be, and then how much space does that allow for my bedroom? I was just checking to make sure that I actually hit record on my phone there. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and using my scale here. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and kind of get an idea. I'm going to get a rough estimate. If I make my laundry room the same size as my bedroom, and I'm just throwing numbers out here right now. I'm just putting a dot right here just to kind of get an idea. That's going to be my wall. And then if I make my bathroom five foot, that gives me a little closet of a bedroom. So I can't do that. Um, so maybe what I do here is I make my laundry here and I turn my bathroom into a hall towards the back side of this. Let me see what five foot looks like here. Okay, that doesn't give me a lot of room, but it does give me some room. So what I'm thinking I might do here, is I think I may, I was afraid y'all wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm lining up here, and that's five foot, so I can make this a bathroom right here. Hmm. Maybe I add the laundry into my bathroom. Maybe that's what I do. Maybe that's exactly what I do. Okay, let's do this. Let's go ahead and plan for five foot. That's exactly what we'll do. So we'll go ahead and plan for five foot just like we originally planned over here. Put it over here where y'all can see. that line. Now I'm going to add a 36 inch closet. So we're going to do this. This will make sense to you in just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and build my closet across here. line super light here. And I'm going to be erasing some of these lines. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, because that should be eight foot across here. Let me look at here. Yep, so that's eight foot. So at four foot, make a mark. So I'm going to come to this side just a little, that side just a little. Four foot is my center. I'm going to do the same here. Four foot is my center. I'm going to build me, draw my wall. I can actually draw it on. Uh, we'll go to that area. So 
something along like that. So what we're going to do here is it looks like we're going to have a stackable washer dryer here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually mark this out right here and right here. And I'm going to take this out and we can put a stackable washer dryer inside this closet space here. Just like so. And then on this side, I can put a 30 inch door and make that into a bedroom closet. So 30 inches will be two foot plus six inches, which is easy enough. I just do this. There's 24, there's six inches, that's a 30 inch open. And now, we'll take out that little door. And that can actually be a door. This over here, the best we could do is a slider. If we wanna put like a barn door. We could put bifold door here, not a problem. It's just you can't put the door on until you put your appliance in, or it won't fit. Uh, it'll be really close. I mean, it'll be real, really tight. So just be mindful of that as well. So it really doesn't matter what door you put there. We may actually put a bifold door there. So that makes my bedroom a, a really tiny room. It's eight foot by six foot six. Really tiny rooms, really tiny house. So, uh, which I knew that. I knew that coming into it. I knew that this would be um, super small square up my walls here. I noticed that the walls were a little skewed. I must have been in a hurry yesterday. There we go. All right, so now I have all this space here. So now I plan to put my kitchen on this wall here, leaving this space because I know I have a door going into that bathroom right here. So I gotta leave space going in there. Can't be putting kitchen cabinets and stuff like that in. And I also need to put a door for my bedroom. So coming off of here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm gonna actually come from this wall here. So that's three foot right there. It's two, two, six, three, three, six, four. So I'm gonna put my three foot six right there on in line with that wall right there. And I'm gonna mark at the six inch mark. And then I'm going to mark it at zero. And that gives me one, two, three. Gives me a three foot door open. Now most, most all interior doors swing in. So we have to keep that into consideration wherever we're putting our doors against different walls. I don't want to take up wall space in a bathroom because I may want to put my sink here and the last thing I want to do is walk in the door and bump it straight into a sink. So that's why I moved my door as far over this direction as possible so that I don't have it so close to this exterior wall. That would just be really interesting and unique to come in and then have to, it's almost like you're doing a serpentine or something coming through and then go around your sink, go around your toilet and then be able to get to the tub. That just, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but if that's what you want to put, I won't critique you too much. All right, here we go. All right, on my door here, I do want my interior door a little closer to the inside edge here. So I'm going to make my first mark right here, and then I'm going to make my second mark at three foot six. The reason three foot six is because I'm taking up six inches right here because I don't want it right up against the wall. And then of course I have my three foot door open. Okay. All right. 
So that wall is done, that wall is done, that wall is done. So now it's time to start laying out our cabinets. Now, at any point, um, if we want to stop this video just so you guys can get caught up, kind of get oriented, please do that at any time. Um, pause it. I'm going to continue. Uh, so when you unpause it, we just, we'll just keep going. So now we're going to look at some of these templates. Okay. Now, I put this right here. You do not have to write this in right now. If you did write it in, fine. Leave it. Put whatever you want over it. For example, each one of these templates have a special purpose. So in this particular one, it's just shapes. You have an oval shapes, you have round, circular, you have square, you have rectangular, you have triangular, you have hexagon, octagon, whatever they are. So, and as you can see, they're all different sizes. Now, this one here just happens to be the metric system. Doesn't really matter. Same thing here, you got different shapes. These are electrical symbols, it looks like, or mechanical. These are actually mechanical symbols. So probably don't need this one, okay? Not unless you saw a shape here that you absolutely love and you're thinking, oh man, that'd be a really cool uh, claw foot tub or something right there, then that would be perfectly fine. All right, this one here looks like you have additional shapes. Um, I was looking to see, that one there kind of looks like a door, but not really. So, I'm uh, not 100% sure about this particular one. So, um, that looks like that could be a toilet maybe. Toilet, really hard to say. I think that's exactly what it is because I think that might be a sink. That would be like a kitchen sink um, and so forth. Now, going back to some of these right here, these make perfect for appliances and kitchens. Okay, I have my shoes, sorry. These make for perfect appliance and kitchen sizes, so keep that in mind as well. Do know that your refrigerator and stove are larger than your cabinets as far as how far they stick out. So here we go. Now these are, this is toilets right here. All of these are toilets right here. Um, tubs, um, I'm not sure exactly what those, I think there's like miniature more versions of these. So, uh, more tubs, uh, possible showers, stuff like that. All right, same thing, different shapes. Looks like you got maybe a couple of toilets right here. Um, some ovals, rectangles, tubs, different sizes. Um, that looks like dining room tables, maybe chairs or, or, or something with sofas, stuff like that. And a larger version of the last one we just had, like dining room tables. These what these are right here. Um, most of my templates have always had a description of what they are. So this one, you know, I like this because that's your stove. That looks like a uh, sinks. That's what those are, like kitchen counter sinks, um, tub, stuff like that. So I'm gonna allow you to use whatever discretion you want. You can pick out shapes that you like. Um, things that fit the space that you have, etc. So uh, definitely not going to critique you too much on that, unless you decide you want to put a huge, uh, you know, I wouldn't put this one on this design here, it's too large. So you probably definitely go with the smaller one um, from here, if you want a nice dining room table and go from there. And this literally, you just essentially just if I was to draw it in, you just use it as a template, something along this line. Like that. Four chairs and a table. Okay. Um, in the bathroom, I think I mentioned toilets earlier. Let's see if I can find them again. Well, here's a tub right here. I mentioned the uh, five foot. Uh, space, um, 
maybe I decide, oh, maybe in this bathroom I want to use a tub shower unit. And that will give me something along this line right here. I square it up with my room, my space I have. And I put in that tub there. And let's say I need a toilet in there. Let me grab one of these. Set this something along the line with this right here. Make sure your alignment so it's not crooked. Something like that. And then if I want to put in a kitchen sink or a cabinet, then I might do something along the lines of this right here. I will put in the cabinet first. And then come in with something a little smaller. Something like this. Centering it up. Not sure if you can see that. I think you can. And then there's your sink. Something along that lines. Um, washer dryer, stack washer dryer. I would probably just kind of find a nice size square that fits that space something along this line right here that looks like that and so forth and so on so you have the tools i want you to go ahead and finish your design go ahead and start plugging in your stuff when it comes to your kitchen make sure that your cabinets are all the same size for example, this one right here, I may decide I'm going with the 12s and I kind of want to make sure that my refrigerator isn't stuck in a corner, my stove is not in a corner. Don't matter if you decide, okay, I'm going to put in a countertop or a cabinet. Like so, and then I'm going to put in an appliance next to that. So I may skip a space right here Make a line and then go ahead and finish out another one there. Now maybe here, instead of putting, maybe I want to put in my uh, kitchen sink. So in that one, I would want a longer one. Maybe I use this longer one here. Something along the lines of this. And then using the template from earlier, See if I can find here it is. I may want to put in this here. I'm trying to put those lines in but you don't have to. You can actually leave it open. You can put that center and do whatever you want. I'm gonna leave that open just to have countertop space. Here, it actually has, do it like this. It's for your stove. if I can draw this in and of course looks like that zoom in a little bit that was not the button I meant to push but it looks something like that if that makes sense Let's do try, I probably should have turned this one the other way because we wanna make sure that all of our cabinets are the same dimensions. So I probably want to erase that little bit right there. So 
something like that. And of course, you'll do the same thing with your refrigerator. The refrigerator will stick out a little beyond because it is deeper than your cabinets. Because the cabinets are essentially 24 inches where your stove is 30 by 30 and your refrigerator will be 30 inches deep. And if it's a double, it can be up to 40 inches uh, wide. So. so take the remainder of your time here and go ahead and continue to draw continue to make it best better than it is i'm looking for cleanliness i'm looking for straight lines if i see anything beyond a small pencil mark like this if i see where you tried to draw this wall by hand and it's and i can tell then those that's when you start getting points taken off use the tools you have use the a quarter inch scale like i said if you can't read the quarter inch scale Use the one inch scale. Every quarter inch equals a foot, okay? So that mark right there is six inches. One foot, one foot six, two foot, et cetera, et cetera. So continue to do this, do a uh, clean job, and uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys produce.